No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mandel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. And for all those joining us live on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms, we say good evening, universe, and la le padrig sana yav, which means happy St. Patrick's Day in Gaelic. And that'll be the last of my Gaelic speaking for the rest of my Thank life. Thank you, Drew Omendel. <laughs> That's right. Alongside... Drew uh, wearing a Omendel. Jets hat? What kind of show is this? Uh, you know, Laura went out. To, Laura was out today and said I needed to wear green uh, for St. Patrick's Day. At least turn it around, Drew. I mean, what are you looking like here? I'm gonna take it off in a second, Dave. It's not the end of the world. You relax, okay? <laughs> we, we. I don't think anybody's going to accuse me as a, of being a homer at any point in time. But uh, Laura picked me up a green uh, St. Patrick's Day hat, and uh, I don't have any green shirts. Is that a so handkerchief? Green... This is not a handkerchief. In fact, this is a. <laughs> Uh, one of my kids' scarves, but it's actually a Lucky Charms branded scarf. So hang on, let me see if I can get that on the camera there. Uh, see, Lucky Charms is is, is the is the supporter of this scarf. I don't know what happened to Dave. Dave just left and went somewhere. But uh, Lucky Charms is is this. Uh, we got this scarf from somewhere. I don't know where the hell it is. But uh, I'm borrowing it from my kids to get in the spirit of the things of the day, given that it's St. Patrick's Day. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, we thought we'd uh, wear some green. And my wife, of course, Laura, has some Irish heritage if you go way back. So, so do corn I. Beef. I'm a quarter. There you go. You're a quarter. So corned beef, cabbage, and Jameson's for everybody on this uh, Sunday evening. There you go, Dave. Is that a fighting Irish hat? Is that what that is? There you go. <laughs> We're all a little Irish. The rare Irish Love Jews it. join uh, on today's edition of the Illegal Curve post-game show. Uh, frankly, uh, it's probably more entertaining to talk about that than uh, it was competitive to talk about that Winnipeg Jets uh, demolishment. Uh, not really a word, but you'll go with it, of the Columbus Blue Jackets. The tonight. Blue Jackets should give all the fans that watch that game at Nationwide Arena their money back. Well, I mean, it, it, that was... In, in, in a stretch of some terrible hockey that we've seen, some really bad opponents, that might be the worst. That, that might have been the worst game, uh, the worst opponent we've seen in a long while for the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, you know, especially what happened in that uh, second period where it was. Was Johnny just... Gaudreau in that game, Drew? Like, honestly, wow. like, I realize he was right. in that game, but like, uh, yeah, that Blue Jackets team is really bad. But again, we're going to break down the goals in the Betway game recap and everything like that. But like, this is a, 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 a terrible team that the Jets should be beating six yes. to one. And they did, right? Despite the fact the first period was pretty bad. Yeah, the first period wasn't a good period for the Winnipeg Jets. By you know, they, they were, you know, they got obviously the early goal that we'll talk about coming up here momentarily. Uh, and the Betway game recap, as you as you mentioned, as you they get the early goal. But other than that, you know, Columbus was the better of the two teams in that first period. And it seems like the Jets went to the dressing room, despite having the lead, they went to the dressing room with a sour taste in their mouth because they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to even fool around in the in this second period because that second yeah. period was about as one-sided a period as we've seen this season, Dave. Yeah, there's no question about that. And you're right. Look, there's no excuse. The Columbus Blue Jackets played last night. The Columbus yeah. Blue Jackets are not a very good hockey team. Mm -hmm. So if you're the Winnipeg Jets... When we look at this five-game road trip, of the games that you are going to play on it, this is your easiest one. So this is the one you needed to have this type of effort. This is the one where you needed to, you know, we we talk about building chemistry on that second line and what they're able to do as a as a trio, and we saw it in the second period. So from that, and I guess again in the third period, but you wanted to see that sort of thing, and you got that. So the Jets had the opportunity, look, like as you said, this is this the two teams you've now beaten are the two teams you should have beaten. Yes. You should have done what you did to the Ducks on Friday. You should have done what you did to the Blue Jackets today. Those are those are both things that you it was an expectation. Now, um, you're gonna have a tough way tougher test, says Captain Obvious on Tuesday when you take on the New York Rangers and uh Ezzy's boy Rempy, but uh, who's back no, from not suspension. my boy, not my boy back from suspension, although it's funny because after the fight Tyrell Bauer had yesterday, as uh, people were saying, call him up and they can deal with each other. The only problem, hold on, Drew, just no, no, one second. Give me a little latitude here. It's a funny story. They both played for Seattle. They both grew up in Alberta. They're buddies. They trained together in the offseason. So it wouldn't matter anyways because you're not going to do that. But it just, 
anyways, his it's his first game back from suspension. We've got a really good Rangers team. So the Jets are going to have to be ready and they're going to have rested guys because they went with the same lineup. So we thought maybe they would, you know, get uh, Dylan Sandberg back into the lineup. He doesn't, he stays out, which was a little bit curious. Cole Pervetti stays out he of the comes lineup. back in Tuesday night, Dave. I really oh, no, do. I think 100%. Sandberg and Miller are back in for sure. Perfetti, well, I'm know, not so sure about. I wouldn't be surprised about Perfetti, but I don't think you're giving, I, I, at the very least, I don't think, even though Logan Stanley got a goal tonight, um, I don't think Dylan Sandberg is going to be out for the third straight game. And I think I Dave's in agreement with that. Yeah, yeah and, and, and Rick Bonus said that everybody's going to play on this road trip. I mean, he yeah. said that in his media availability, which, of course, is available on IllegalCurve.com. Uh, he said, look, that he didn't expect to roll out the same lineup. But, you know, given what happened on Friday, given how well everybody played, they, he decided to just go again with the, with the same lineup. But he said that everybody is going to play because that's exactly what we talked about yesterday on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. The Jets are in a position where you can roll guys and sit some guys and get some guys some extra rest and that's a fortuitous position to be in not only because of where you are in the standings that certainly is a big factor in it but also the the where they are in terms of the salary cap the fact that they have this expanded roster which yep. is to their advantage so use it to your advantage mm -hmm. and get guys you know get some guys some days off that they wouldn't typically get get guys feeling good about themselves and and just sort of constantly rotating through and doing some lineup churn from now until probably the last few games of the season when you really want to maybe begin to narrow down what you want for the start of the playoffs and the Jets should take advantage of that and that's what Rick Bonus basically said they're going to do uh, over the course of this road trip and then I'm sure for the first uh, few games back at home after this week is done. Right, and I think you know what you saw tonight was the continued strong play of the Monaghan line. We're again, we'll we'll go goal by goal here. Like I didn't think Shifley, Connor, and IFL were particularly dominant, but that no. this this was a cookie night, right? So like you had, um, you know, every you every night's a cookie night for us, as a. Well, it's true. It is true. Yeah, <laughs> especially uh, chocolate chip. Right, that's our uh, favorite. I, Are you an oatmeal? Thought, ra yeah. Do you like oatmeal raisin? Because I, no. I love oatmeal raisin. Oatmeal chocolate chip. Uh, uh, Aaron yesterday uh, was in a swimming competition. At the end of the competition, they sort of got a goodie bag of, of treats and things. And she doesn't like oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. So she handed those over to me real quick. And let me tell you, daddy didn't waste any time snarfling those uh, two oatmeal, dad's oatmeal chocolate chip cookies down. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm with you. Oatmeal raisin or oatmeal chocolate chip. But this isn't the cookie hour even though it was a cookie night for the Jets. But, I mean, look, they didn't need the Shifley line to be dominant, right, Dave? So um, I, I still think Nemestikov is a better – we talked about it on yesterday morning show, so I'm just going to echo what I said. I like Nemestikov if uh, Toffoli's not playing on the top line, right? But, mm. I mean, look, guys, I mean, Toffoli – Dave mentioned this uh, as we were watching this game, right? Like four goals in the last two games, and he just, he just fits so well on that second line. And he would fit nicely on the first line, I think, too. But, uh, I mean, look, the Jets probably could have had eight or nine goals. There was the disallowed goal, obviously, right? But Columbus just isn't a very good team. And I think, you know, in the back of the Jets players' minds was, you know, some of these losses, right? Like, they've been shut out a couple times over the last couple weeks. And I think, based on how stinky that first period was, Dave, I think that that was in the backs of their minds that they were like, okay, guys, let's, you know, let's turn it up here. We're playing the Columbus Blue Jackets. As Drew mentioned, you've got the Rangers coming up, the Devils, the Islanders, the Capitals. Not in that order, but those are the other four games on this road trip. So like Dave said, this was the easiest game to start it off. And I don't think that the Jets wanted to you know, this to be a one-goal lead or anything like that. They they put their foot on the gas and they they stomped on the Blue Jackets' throats, if you will. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was just a set, you know, and the Jets. Really Sorry to be so graphic there, Drew, but that's true. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> morbid, a little, uh, you know, a little much for a, you know, just before eight o'clock. It's still this might be a G rated show tonight. Early given that it's still the early hour. No, we're not yeah. going to start working yeah. PG or, or, or NC 17 or anything like that just yet there, Mr. Ginsburg. But uh, it's OK. We'll forgive you on that one. Look, the Jets really only played the, you know, that one period. But that one period was so dominant that it was enough. And, and yeah, you know, I'm not going to look you can say Columbus was the better team in the third period or maybe had a better flow of the game in the third period but it doesn't matter I mean that no. doesn't matter yeah. at all that's like saying the Jets had a better third period against the Predators well yeah they did but that was after they were already down for nothing it doesn't matter at that point in time that's just you know 
you know, the Jets aren't in a, in a position. They're not going to be doing anything risky. They're not going to be doing anything the least bit challenging. They're going to make their try and make their lives as simple as they can be. So no wonder Columbus is going to outshoot them. And no wonder Columbus is going to look like they have a better, uh, more zone time in the third period. The Jets, anytime yeah. they wanted to, could have j- just sort of, you know, decided. You can exert your whatever will you want at that That's point. Right. Drew. Exactly right. They're you know, some 6 1 games, guys, like there's a couple of empty net goals, and you're like, well, the score wasn't really indicative of the play on the ice. <laughs> the score in this game was indicative of the yeah. play on the ice, right? Like, That's right. This could have been worse. And yes, I agree. A lot of people in the, the chat talking about Hellebuck in the first period. Yeah, Hellebuck was sharp, as he always is, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, th- you know, the Jets could have found themselves down a goal for sure, Dave. But like Drew said, I mean, you know, the three, was it three goals or four goals in the second period? I forget. Four. I think it was three. Four. four. No, there four. you go. So, I mean, the game's over, <laughs> like at that point, yeah. right? Like, you, you're just not going to be getting that many goals past Hellebuck unless, you know, something really weird were to happen. So, um, Nothing, yeah, nothing, give nothing the Jets credit for game. taking advantage of it. Drew always talks about it. Take advantage of a weaker opponent. That's what the Jets did here. This yeah. was a, a a game where as long as you played, you know, your your B level game, you're going to beat a team like the Blue Jackets. That's just it. That's exactly right. I mean, we, and we talk again with something else we sort of referenced yesterday on the, on the po- on the illegal curve hockey show that the Jets didn't need an A game. They had an A game against Anaheim, but they could probably beat Anaheim with a B plus game. Today, I don't think the Jets necessarily had an A game for the for most of the sixty minutes. They had an A game certainly in that second period, but other than that, I thought it was probably you know that first period was at best what a B. You know, if you yeah. want to grade my period, yeah. that's the B. And so the, you're fortunate or you're happy to be out one nothing after 20 minutes, thanks to Connor Hellbuck, a lot of it. And then that third period, the second period was such an A-plus that the third period could have been an F and it didn't matter because the Jets, you know, had a 5 nothing lead after 40 minutes. And it's not like Columbus was going to stage a comeback, no matter, uh, you know, even though they scored, what was it, you know, 19 seconds into the, uh, 39 seconds in to the, uh, to the third period. It didn't matter at that point in time. No, and we've got the comment up from David Shakowicz here talking about uh, the comment is the boys got a talking to in the first intermission. It's possible that, you know, Bones gave it to them. But I, but I also think, think this was this was the players, That's probably exactly. guys like Adam Lowry, Josh Morrissey, Mark Shifley, the leadership group, right, Dave? Like, I think this is where this is where, you know, those guys stand up in the dressing room. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they sat down. But the point is they were, <laughs> they were the ones that were vocal in the dressing room saying like, hey, guys, like, you know, we played like horse crap in the first period like let's get going here this is the first game uh, of a road trip and we want to get it off uh, on the right foot right so uh, i'm not necessarily sure that it was one of those situations but regardless the jets effort in the second period was uh you know far better than it was in the first that's for sure yeah Yeah, and look it's one of those things you have to still respect your opponent right you know they still have some nhl talent we talked about it with aaron portsline on yesterday's illegal curve hockey show for some time but this is clearly a group. I mean, we talked about Johnny Goudreau, and as he's right, was sometime. I, I honestly don't think I even took note of him till maybe in the third period where he got a shot off on Hellebuck, and I was like, "Oh, there's Johnny Goudreau," but he really wasn't. He wasn't of any significance. Um, and you know, like it, it's just it's clear when this team is just you know similar to they they've got I know some exciting young talent. Um, it's not quite there yet, so they're still a ways away. But ultimately, this is again. This is this is a. I'm not going to say it's a hard game to get excited for, but it's probably a bit of a hard game to get excited for because of, you know, it's almost one of those inevitables. And the one thing you have to give the Jets credit for is they did what they needed to do. Right? They didn't just beat Columbus three one, a team that played last night. Right? right? They handled them well. And and even though Columbus got one back, I mean, again, it's like watching a cat toy with a mouse. Really, in my mind, in terms of the the strengths of these two um, opponents. So uh, ultimately, you wanted to see that Winnipeg was going to do what they did, which was like you didn't like the start from Winnipeg because again, I don't think that they were as engaged as we'll see on Tuesday when you know that you can't be flat-footed against the Rangers because they're too good a hockey team. So we'll see if they're ready to go right from puck drop. And look, that that's not really been the Jets' mo. Has been you know they're they're um, being ready to go right from puck drop. Right. But ultimately, I think you just saw a team know like th- we we can handle this team. They did what they needed to do, which was handle them, you know, e- rather easily. And then you take the two points, you go into the uh, dressing room, and you're like, 
Listen, we've got 43 wins on the road. I mean, this is I'm 43 wins in total. Sorry. You're back. In, you're back <laughs> in, inflating the, the road record a little bit. No, but I mean, you're back in first place. Yes. Right. 67 games. It took them to get 43 wins. And I'll go with some more potpourri because yeah. you know, it's coming, Drew. Oh, 43 boy. wins came in 72 games in 1718 and in 77 games in last year. So well ahead of last year. Make- we need I think to make a good bumper for compared- potpourri for, you know, you know, you know instead <laughs> no, of, no, cause then we'd be playing that bumper every five <laughs> seconds. Instead of coming with some bumper, useless tidbit. It's going to be like, here comes some useless potpourri from David, you know, put on your, put on your smelling, uh, your, your smell of the flowers. Here's some useless <laughs> potpourri from Dave Manouk. Well, that'd be, you'd be a lot of, be a lot of playing that bumper. But anyways, <laughs> it's, it's just interesting because again, to the folks who were, Comparing this team to last year's team, this team is 10 wins ahead of where they were last year at this time. So uh, definitely something that's worth noting. What I think, uh, you know, sorry, Ezzy, but you know, what I think it's worth noting before we head into the Betway game recap uh, is the time on ice for the forwards. I mean, the beauty of a game like tonight, Mm -hmm. when you're in the midst of this five games in eight nights sort of stretch, you know, or you're, you're starting that is that, you know, of all the Jets forwards, Adam Lowry led all Jets forwards with 16 minutes and 58 seconds of ice time. Which is so great. Really low number in terms yeah. of time on ice. The definition of spreading had, around the ice time, right, Drew? Right, exactly. Morgan, or is it Morgan Barron who had the least, or is it David Gustafson? David Gustafson had the least at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So all 12 of your forwards played between 10 and a half minutes and 16 minutes, 58 seconds. That's I like beautiful Gus's from game the Giants. Time. For a guy that hasn't played a lot for the Jets this year, I really liked his game. Like, he's a guy that I think you know, should get a strong look, you know, for playing the majority of games down the stretch. Obviously, Cole Perfetti has something to say about that. But for me, like, I think Gustafson has shown me more on the fourth line than Rasmus Kupari. No question mm-hmm. about it. He's 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 big and he's physical. He hasn't it hasn't translated onto the score sheet. But every time when he's got a head of speed, be, uh, head of steam behind him and he goes in on the forecheck, you can sort of see how he's grown into his big frame how he's no longer you know the you know the, uh, just sort of the the frail thin tall lanky sort of david gustafson how he's i also like the out. fact that gustafson and nemesnikov drew can both take face-offs absolutely exactly. right like morgan Barron can as well but what i'm saying is like you know these guys are interchangeable center wing you know depending yes. what side they're on and everything like that so it's just something to to, to keep an eye on because Right now, Perfetti could come in as early as Tuesday, but honestly, guys, I- I'm kind of leaning towards, you know, Bones sticking with Gustafson, Barron, and Nemestikov. I think that line has been really solid. It has been, as in, and, you know, it, Drew says, you know, Gustafson doesn't get on the score sheet, but the Logan Stanley goal doesn't happen if he's not creating the screen. So it's funny how, like, and we saw it last night in the Moose game, where guys will be in front. The goals are not happening without that screen, without a guy willing to stand in front and take away the goaltender's eyes. They don't get, they get a plus on it, which, you know, we know how exciting that is for folks, but, but ultimately he doesn't get on the score sheet. But, you know, like I said, so it's funny when they call that an unassisted goal as he, it's not an unassisted goal because really uh, if it's not for Gustafson, that goal isn't happening, that big Logan Stanley bomb, but I digress. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We've still got uh, three goals other before that one to start talking about. Yeah, uh, speaking of the, that line, Gustafson, the Mesnikov, Baron, they led the Jets in terms of the Jets forward lines in terms of Corsi almost there you uh, go. at 63, 64%. So, you know, really strong game for that for that line. I mean, it was a strong game for most of the Winnipeg Jets, but that line is especially so. So I wouldn't be surprised to stay, see them stay together on uh, Tuesday against the Rangers. Let's get into it goal by goal. There's six Jets goals to go through. It is the Betway game recap here on the Illegal Curve post game show the bet with game recap Big thanks to our friends at Betway, of course, for their support of the Illegal Curve post-game show. Almost 400 of you watching us on a Sunday night. You should know that Betway is the sports betting app that puts you, the customer, at the forefront. March Madness bracket unveiled earlier tonight. That means that you know that Thursday, Friday, big, big betting days, Betway is your destination for some great March Madness action. Go so Kentucky, on over right, Drew? Bet- Say that again, Ezzy? Go Kentucky. Go Kentucky, you're right. Right about that, my friend. Head on over to Betway and bet your way. Must be 19 years or older to play. Please 
play responsibly. That's certainly first and foremost. Jets open the scoring exactly what you want to do against a lesser opponent. They open the scoring nice and early. The highlight of the first period would have been this one. A minute 26 into the game, Kyle Connor gets his 29th of the year assist to Mark Shifley and Dylan DeMello. And, you know, I, I, Yes, Kyle Connor's goal scoring numbers might be a little bit down this year from past years. That's largely due to the fact he missed, you know, the six weeks with the knee injury. Yeah, he missed 16 games, right? Right. But you don't leave Kyle Connor all yeah. alone below the hash marks between the dots. Just don't do that. You're asking for trouble. Shifley goes uh, low to high, and Connor makes no mistake. And it's just, like, what is that defensive coverage? I mean, there's a number of those times during the course of tonight's game you could say, what is that defensive coverage from the Blue Jackets? But certainly a minute 26 into the game, and you're like, what did I just see? And it's one nothing for the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, it was uh, Alex Nylander, who was the forward I, I took a note of, <laughs> that was really kind of just standing around. Maybe that's the reason why Alex Nylander has been on so many NHL teams, as opposed to his brother, who's obviously a star in, in Toronto. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, Drew. It's a beauty pass by Mark Shifley. Like, how many times, guys, have we said that over the years, right? Shifley to Connor or Connor to Shifley. But um, really, there's not much more to it. Shifley, just like you said, Shifley finds uh, Connor, who's in the slot, and it's just really easy for him, and he makes no mistake about it. So there's not much, you know, really to break down. You know, I think obviously the context is really important. The Jets' first game of, the, of a long road trip, yeah. uh, you want to get the early goal. And obviously, you don't know that you're going to get the goal that early, Dave. But, I mean, that's what you want to do, especially, I think, when a team is on the second game of a back-to-back. -back. It's not yeah. a very good team. So, um, you know, you couldn't have really scripted that any better, right? And and it comes from the first line. And we know that the Shifley line, they haven't been terrible, obviously. But they also haven't been, I, I think, maybe as dominant as you would like to see your first line at this point in a regular season, right? We're in the, obviously, the final stretches of the regular season here. But, yeah. Just nice chemistry there shown by Shifley and Connor. But yes, Drew, I agree with you. That's what we saw all night long. Just loose defensive coverage from the Blue Jackets. Just kind of clueless out there. And, you know, I just was going to add, it's just... Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, but it just goes to show you that it's that chemistry that Shifley and, and Connor have, right? That knowing where the other guy is going to be. And, and Mark Shifley makes no mistake. And this is his... Was that his ninth year or something? No. I think it was his sixth or seventh year now of getting. I should know. I since I since I put this in the recap. You're the potpourri guy. How do you not know. know the potpourri you're trying to get out here? Sixth time of his career that he's had at least forty assists in a season. So uh, you know he's had fifty one time. Uh, as he, I think that was sixteen, seventeen, or maybe seventeen, eighteen, probably seventeen, eighteen when they went on that run. But um, so we'll see if he can get the fifty. Should be able to do it. And Dylan Demello, he also who picked up the secondary assist. He uh, hits a career high for himself in terms of which matching his career high, I should say, from last year and 21 assists. So it, again, it's more just the idea of getting on a tired opponent and a team that, remember, we always, again, I always laugh because I always forget what the rule is. When you're the team that played the night before, is it that you're better in the first period or you're better in the third <laughs> period? Really, it all depends on what, you know, what ends, what the result is. And then you say, that's the way you you kind of tangle, you you tailor the, the comment to be as, mm -hmm. but ultimately... You know, you've kind of felt like, okay, maybe Columbus would have a little jump in their step to start the game. And, you know, even though it was a bit of an unusual start time at the 5 p.m. Uh, Central, but ultimately... Uh, 6 p.m. local in Columbus, though. 6 p.m. Yeah, still, it's yeah. still a different start time than the 7 usual and or 6.30 stupid start times from last week. But now it's back to somewhat regular in terms of, well, maybe not. But anyways, the point is that you, you got a good start. You got that good feeling. And then ultimately... It's funny because I, at that point, I don't know about you guys, but I was like, well, it's, it's going to be a long night for Columbus. It didn't turn out to be for the rest of the period, right. but I thought it was going to be based on that start. Yeah, you know, and that's exactly right. I mean, that's where, you know, the rest of the period, they outshoot Winnipeg 11 to 7. Uh, at, you know, and if it wasn't for Connor Hellebuck uh, and mm -hmm. the Jets were just way too loose defensively in that first period, as he. And so Connor Hellebuck had to make a number of, of nice saves, none that I would describe as, you know, five alarm robbery or anything along those lines, but he had to be probably the best Jets player in that first period until the Jets found their legs and decided to take over the game come period number two. Yeah, I would agree with that. Absolutely. And, you know, we've seen that so many times this year, but, you know, 
if you're able, the, the problem is like, you know, last year, the Jets were losing these types of games. Like they would have a couple of bad periods. Now this year, they're having one bad period, but they make up for that with an excellent period. And we talked mm-hmm. about four goals in the second period. But yeah, you're right. I mean, and look, Columbus, they're in, they're still in front of a home crowd on a Sunday. You know, they're trying to, they have pride. All players have pride. All teams have pride. They're just not a very good team, right? And like, I'm just watching the replay here. Um, Boo, so Boo, Alex Nylander is on the top line. Uh, I mean, that shows you how bad the Blue Jackets are, right? He's <laughs> but, actually been on a heater as of late. I think he entered the, the, today's game seven goals in his last nine games or something for Columbus since, yeah, since they acquired him. him I just Buffalo. think Nylander, yeah. you remember, Drew is a sixth, I think sixth overall pick. Yeah. He just hasn't really put together long stretches. You're right. The talent is there around. for sure. I, I'm not taking anything away from his talent. He's definitely got first round talent, if you want to call it that. But uh, Boone Jenner is following Shifley behind the net. And then it's the Jake Bean, Zach Wierenski, which is the top pair. Like this is the Jets top line, top forward line, top pair versus the Blue Jacks, Blue Jackets top forward line and top D pair one and a half minutes into the game. And to me, like Nylander just doesn't react and he just doesn't pick up Kyle Connor. Like that's his man. Zach Wierenski was also in front of the net. Uh, I mentioned Jake Bean was covering uh, Iafalo, of course. He's the other forward. But, yeah, I mean, it's just, look, the Blue Jackets had some scoring chances, but like you said, Drew, I mean, I, I just at no point in that first period did I think that, you know, the Blue Jackets were in control of this game or were going to take control of this game. Um, I think the Jets realized that, you know, okay, let's just get the job done in the second period. Maybe they didn't expect to score four goals, but, I mean, the way Elvis Mer- Merzlikens has been playing this year, uh, Aaron Portsline told us yesterday he expects him to be bought out. So yeah. I don't think anybody should be that surprised that Merzlikens didn't look too hot in this game. He certainly didn't. One nothing for the Jets after 20 minutes. They opened the scoring in that first in 86 seconds. They improve upon that in period number two, 70 seconds into the second period. It's Nikolai Ehlers, his 20th, all of which have come at five on five, which is a which bit is of amazing. an incredible stat. Uh, I think he'd be. Se- I think he's second in the NHL in five on five goals for. Uh, so the, it's it's his 20th of the year, assisted to Foley and Monaghan. And again, you're leaving a goal scorer uh, wide open in the slot in a high danger area. It's almost you know a carbon copy of a low to high goal, just like we saw on the Connor goal. Um, you know, to get to that point wasn't exactly the same, but you have to have better defensive zone coverage. I mean, this is shades of the Winnipeg Jets from a couple of years ago, just mm-hmm. being, you know, home free uh, within the uh, within the high danger zone. And, you know, Ehlers makes no mistake on this one uh, to make it two nothing uh, 70 seconds into the period, Dave. And, you know, it's funny. There's so many things that went well for Winnipeg, right? They intercept the puck in the neutral zone with the Ehlers being aggressive, yes. carry it in. Ehlers rips it off the post. Josh Morrissey, aggressive on along the wall, keeps the puck deep in the Columbus end. And then, you know, Tyler Toffoli, credit him. What a pass. No look. And Nikolai Ehlers, you're right. Terrible defensive coverage by the Blue Jackets. Mm. But you got to give Ehlers credit for being in the right spot and, and just putting home a beauty. And that, I mean, you want to talk about guys who can score in consistency. Seven straight, no, I think it's seven straight years for Nikolai Ehlers with at least 20 goals. Uh, or at least seven times in his career, I should say. I don't know if it's seven straight, but it's it's unbelievable how how automatic he is and how good his shot is. So um, we saw it on the hitting the post, and yeah. then you know shortly thereafter they get that two nothing lead. And once that starts to happen, and then you're like, it's over, Rock. <laughs> like it's done. You can yeah. feel like the Jets are taking back control, and obviously they did for the remainder of that period. But I just like the the idea, Ezzy, that this line is developing chemistry. And yes. that's what Rick Bonus has been talking about. And everybody w- who's so desperate, and don't get me wrong, I agree that Nikolai Ehlers and Mark Shifley, we know the numbers. We know that it works better. The results are there from, from, an, from an analytics perspective. But the biggest thing for this Jets club has been the second line and finding you know someone who's going to assist them. And I think, you know, I still think, and again, I'm not here to bash Alex Iafalo because in my mind, he's got the best goal song of the entire team with the old poison. <laughs> But I, I I still think Vlad Nemestikov, as we talked about yesterday... Macarena is, a, is at least number two then on your list, right? Sure, sure. But Poison is number one. I mean, come on, Matt. You, you can't beat you can't beat Macarena. I, well, I, I would I would go with Poison. I go with 80s, 80s metal. But the point I'm making is that... I just I want to see think, Drew do Macarena again. I still really? think Nemestikov... Yeah, like Only last night. when they score at home. <laughs> I still think Nemestikov would be a better sort of um, fit with, with Shifley and... Um, 
Connor, but ultimately the whole idea and what we've been hearing from the coaching staff is he really wants to give that second line an opportunity. Well, we're seeing that opportunity and we're seeing the results of that opportunity of them developing that chemistry. And, and so far, mm-hmm. so good. And I think and what I, the Jets have to love on that through. goal, sorry, Ezzy, but they have to love on that goal is what you alluded to, Dave, uh, is that it's it's caused by a neutral zone zone turnover. That's that right. The Jets force the turnover in the neutral zone with a good stick, and they transition it so quickly, and ultimately they end up uh, going to getting getting the goal as a result. Yeah, I think there's a bot in there that you yeah, might want to get rid of. There's some really. Weird... You think that you think that we've all been sentenced to jail? Is 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 that <laughs> is that what's happened here on the? They're gone. I don't, I don't know. They're gone. I, anytime I see that many comments and there's all that caps lock, like there's no reason to use that that much caps lock in a hockey show chat section. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. So thank you for taking care of that, Drew. I did. Um, Dave did it. Me. Or Dave. I wanted to hear that. more about what the person had to say. I was going to subscribe to their newsletter. I <laughs> yeah. thought they had some interesting ideas. I wanted to find out more about. Yeah. Um. But you know, to Dave's point though about the second line, I think especially that we know that Velarde's not on this road trip and he's not going to play these next four games. I think that's that that is a sign or not, that is a reason why I think you're going to see Shifley and Connor stick together on the first line, whereas you might have seen something change there, right? Like we know that Ehlers, Shifley, Velarde is kind of your your Corsi or advanced stats darling line, right? But yeah. we know that right now, the way to Foley, Monaghan, and Ehlers are playing together, um, mm-hmm. and, and I think you could make an argument maybe that you'd like to see to Foley on the top line at some point down the stretch to see, you know, how that line works going into the playoffs. But, you know, I, I still think, you know, look, Ayafalo is a veteran hockey player. You know he doesn't score a lot of goals. He chips in the odd goal here and there, but he's also somebody who you know what you're going to get. We know that Bonus knows he, he likes his reliable lines, hence the Lowry, Niederreiter, Appleton line, right? Like, I, I don't even know if we've seen, um, you know, since maybe earlier in the season, guys, that line broken up, right? Like, that's your long time. quote-unquote identity line, right? So I think you're absolutely right, Dave. Like, And, you know, just continuing on the second goal here, Ehlers... Merz Lickens had to make a great p- blocker save right before this goal was scored. Mm-hmm. Ehlers almost scored two goals on, on one shift. Obviously, I'm joking. That can't happen. But, I mean, Ehlers was, Thanks. like, he wasn't going to be stopped on this on this one. But got to give credit, Dave, for this. Like, Ehlers pokes the puck. Uh, Monaghan pokes the puck along the boards. And it's a really nice backhand. I don't even know, was it between the legs? Might have been between the legs, but it was a backhand yeah. pass by Toffoli right on the stick. So, again, Dave always talks about how good of a playmaker Connor is. Everybody thinks of him as a goal scorer. Toffoli is obviously known as a goal scorer and can score goals, hence the 30 goals. But let's give him some credit here. He can also distribute that puck pretty well. Well, yeah. as he, I know, Drew, I know it's more of a Saturday topic, but just again, think about Ayafalo with Baron and Gustafson. And then Nemesnikov up with Shifley and Connor. It just makes it makes so much more sense. That's what sense. I think makes well, a lot of sense. I, I, it, just, I think, it, it just makes. I, I honestly, really as, as he was talking, I'm just thinking to myself like, you've got a second line that you know now works. You got a third line that you know now works. The first line could be better, and I think Nemesnikov brings that, elevates that line. And I think Ayafalo, Gustafson, and Baron, that's a hell of a good fourth line. Yeah. Nemesnikov I, gives you more offense, a little bit more offense than yeah. than Ayafalo. Not a ton, but also he's a reliable defensive forward. And not that Ayafalo isn't, but I think that you're just getting it like I like Nemesnikov is just, just a, a upside. notch below, a notch above mm-hmm. Ayafalo in terms of what he can how he can drive play on that line. Yes, the offensive upside of, of Nemesnikov is greater than Ayafalo. So I, yeah. you know, since that line's been put together, the Jets haven't struggled. They've won hand right. So yeah, I yeah. think I would not be surprised that if and when the time comes where the Jets struggle and need a bit of an offensive yes. juice, that that switch gets made. I mean, that would be that's a logical move for Rick Bonus to make without that doesn't impact and doesn't have a huge cascading effect all up and down the lineup. Uh, two nothing for the Jets. They make it three nothing. Eight minutes and thirty five seconds after the second goal. This one is to Foley, his twenty ninth assist to Ehlers and Monahan. That's his third in the last, I guess, uh, four plus periods. And it, you what what you love about this one is that was where it starts. It yeah. starts deep in the Jet zone. Yep. With a board battle victory, and then they transition up the ice so wonderfully that 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 that's the greatest appeal of this goal is where it starts. It's not a dump and chase sort of goal. It's a goal that starts with a strong, solid defensive play. 
and then they transition up the ice until Ehlers hits to Foley after Monahan, Monahan got the puck onto Ehlers' stick for the clean zone entry. And, and the Jets into Foley with a really nice set of hands, as we all know. And he's again in a prime scoring area, right yeah. down low, you know, below the below the circles in the high danger zone. And he beats Merzlikens to make it three nothing for the Jets. But you know, the guys, the whole team, the coaching staff are gonna rewind that goal all the way back to the defensive zone coverage and the defensive zone play that starts it all off as a yeah the defensive zone play made by Tyler Defoley, right like right. that's key here right so you're right and I mean again this to me is an example of just a, a bunch of veteran skilled forwards we're talking about the Monaghan line here or the whole team for that matter but specifically on the third jet school the Monaghan line just taking advantage of uh, of a slower, more inexperienced Blue Jackets team, right? Like Cole, Cole Sillinger is in the middle, guys, of this play, and Toffoli just comes down right down Main Street, um, and Ehlers hits him with a beautiful pass. So, like these goals are are the Jets just executed right in the second period, right? Like we talked about the first period, Connor got the goal, but in the second period, like the Jets realized, okay, like we can. We can really take it to these guys here. Second game of a back-to-back. They're just not very good. And I, I think, you know, to, to Drew's point, I think this line, why would you break this line up when you're going up against the Rangers and you're going against other teams fighting for a playoff spot? The Islanders, the Devils, the Capitals, right? Yeah. Like, this is this is the line that you want. I think even though there's there's been a, a big push in, you know, Jets fan nation for Ehlers to be on the top line, I just don't see it happening right now, especially with Velarde out of the lineup. And wow. and you know, right just now rep- you're making the argument that's the top line, Monahan to Foley. And, <laughs> yeah, no, and it's true. It's true. And and you made this point, Drew, when the Jets acquired to Foley. You've got a one A and you've got a one B now. Right, right. And and we'll wait and see. You know, if Nemestikov eventually, you know, usurps uh, Iafalo there. But regardless, I think you know this line. I mean, this again, we're not going to get you know too excited here because it's the worst team in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> uh, but again. If the Jets beat the the Blue Jackets, remember, you know, a, a few weeks back, the Jets beat, uh, was it the Ducks 2-1, and they beat the the, the Blackhawks, I think it was back-to-back, one goal wins over those teams, and we were really cl- critical of how the Jets were playing, because you should stomp on these weaker opponents. That's right. And that's what the Jets did here. So to Foley, Monaghan, Ehlers, lay, they led the way, and they got a lot of goals, a lot of cookies. Yeah, and uh, you know the the game was over after two periods. And it, I just was gonna I, I'm not gonna add anything to the goal analysis because you both just did a good job. But I was just gonna say the only thing that I could could add is it's a good thing Pascal Vincent or Pascal Dupuis, depending on who you're listening to. Hey, I heard okay. I, I I was I think I was maybe finishing off off dinner or something about the, uh, at that point in time, and I heard him say Pascal Dupuis. And I'm like, <laughs> did I hear that right? Or, or am I I'm like, is he a former Penguins player? Because <laughs> boys, sure he should Pascal- have said remember former. Uh, Blue Jackets goalie Pascal Leclerc. There yeah, you go. that would be fine. Was a high, he was a high draft pick, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, he was a first rounder, if I recall correctly. He was. I'm looking up now. Anyways, yeah. all I was going to say is Pascal Vincent, yeah, uh, former Moose bench boss, Jets assistant coach. I was thinking it's a good thing he doesn't have any hair because if he did, watching his team's defensive coverage on this third goal, he'd be pulling it all out because it is uh, it is lacking for uh, for uh, lack of a better term, and I would not be very pleased with my club if that was uh, my team because a lot of guys standing around watching and uh, their immobility was taken advantage of by Winnipeg and and that's yeah. why you saw the goal. It, and yeah. and just one other thing here before we get to the Jets 4 nothing goal. Like, I really think if Adam Fentilli is healthy, if Patrick Line is not in the player assistance program, I think the Blue Jackets Kent are... Kent Johnson? Kent yeah. Johnson, again, yeah. the season. speaking of high draft picks, like, if you have these players... You're still not making the playoffs, guys, but right. at least you're much more competitive. Like Patrick Laine, I mean, he's one of the highest paid guys on the team. We know he's a, a elite goal scorer. He might have been struggling a little bit earlier in the season, but with with no Adam Fentilli, look at Connor Bedard. Like if the if the Hawks didn't have Connor Bedard, I, I don't know if they win 10 games this year. Like yeah. I'm not even joking. <laughs> You're probably not wrong, but you we talked about it yesterday morning. We said that the, the bottom of the Blue Jackets forward group is just 
They're, it, it, it's, it's the not, Cleveland. They're Cleveland. The Cleveland yeah, Monsters. They're, they're exactly right. So the Jets, which don't, which are have you know, are, are have an incredible amount of depth now and are mm-hmm. littered top to bottom with NHL caliber, need to take advantage of that. And they did because the Blue Jackets. When you're a young team, you're likely to be have some talent, but you're also likely to be thin. So as soon as that talent is out of the lineup for injury or whatever the circumstances may be, and as as he just alluded to, we know Columbus has a lot of injuries. That really exposes your lack of depth pretty quickly for for all to see. Uh, just as an aside, Pascal Leclerc was the Blue Jackets uh, first round pick number eight overall yeah. back in 2001. I can't believe that was 23 yeah. years ago. <laughs> <Crazy>. Holy, <laughs> holy Zamboni, as somebody we said. We were not at that draft. Holy to Foley. That was before, no, that was before IC used to go to the draft. That, that was before IC existed. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how true. Long ago. Shocking. That's how actually. long ago it was. <laughs> yes, know? that's true. Yeah. Uh, three nothing at this point in time. The Jets make it four nothing. This comes at the 12 minute mark of the second period. And one of our oft stated rules is that if you score your first goal of the season, you're likely to get the Seagram shot of the game. The Seagram shot of the game. Let's all pretend that this fireball is actually Irish whiskey. Okay, we'll there say you go. this is Irish whiskey. It is St. Patrick's Day. I uh, hope everyone who's celebrating. I, I tried out my Gaelic earlier in the show, so I don't need to do it again. But we hope you're all celebrating and enjoying your day if this is a, a day that you celebrate. And we also want to celebrate our friends at Seagram's for their continued support of the Illegal Curve post-game show. Fireball, you know it tastes like heaven and it burns like hell, but it tastes so good at the same time. So big thanks to our friends at Seagram's. Get any of the fine Seagram's products wherever liquor is sold near you. Logan Stanley. All eight feet, seven inches of him from the (laughs) point with David Gustafson providing the screen on this one. And, you know, it's got to feel good for Logan Stanley to get on the score sheet with this rocket of a shot that uh, Merzlikens doesn't really react to at all because I think Gustafson was providing that screen. And that is uh, Logan Stanley's first of the year, and it makes it 4 nothing for the Winnipeg Jets at this point in time, Dave. Yeah, I mean, and again, that's why I say that David Gustafson should deserve a lot of credit, a lot more than just a little, a little positive, as he because nobody takes positive plus minus seriously anymore. So because of that, uh, no, David Gustafson will uh, not really receive much, uh, many accolades because it's quickly forgotten, unfortunately for him. But his screen is what what sets this up, and he takes away the eyes of Merzlikens and Logan Stanley. Good shot, good presence of mind to recognize that he's got. Uh, Gustafson in front so you know he's easily maligned he's much maligned I should say and I know a lot of folks don't have the time and day for for Logan Stanley but you know who does Rick Bonus and he's the coach and he's the one who makes the lineup decision so while folks may want Billy Hainola we'll have to talk we'll talk about him in the Manuk Moose minute after the break but the fact of the matter is that Logan Stanley is the guy who's going to be seen as the seventh or eighth defenseman depending on your perspective and he's going to get opportunities in this lineup and so it's it's a good shot and it's it, again it's more about building um confidence in a player who's you know feeling like he's he's part of it and that's what you're going to want to see because ultimately you know hearing from Rick Bonus Colin Miller Nate Schmidt Logan Stanley they're all going to be getting into the lineup in the lat remaining what is it 16 games Drew no 15 games now after this 15, I think so 15 after, games I- left these guys are all going to get into it. So you want these guys to as he to feel like they're part of the team and they feel like it when they score goals. Nate Schmidt, we just talked about it. He scored his second goal uh, of the season against the Ducks. So you know that makes him uh galvanized and similarly with Logan Stanley. He gets that he gets that shot, he gets the big bomb, he gets the reward, he feels like he's part of it. It's for nothing for the Jets. Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing before I talk about the goal cuz obviously it's just a big howitzer. There's not a, a ton to break down here, but you know, just one point on Logan Stanley. I think when the Jets acquired Colin Miller, y- y- like you said, Dave, okay, now Schmidt becomes number seven or 7A, 7B, or Stanley's eight, right? So it's just nice, I think, for Logan Stanley. Whatever your opinion is on Logan Stanley, and you're right, Rick Bonus and the coaching staff don't care what any of us say about Logan Stanley. They're going to, ma- I'd love to think that, you know, they watch the show and they, and they you know, factor in <laughs> what we have to say, but I, I, mean, I really these, hope they don't. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Especially when we're drinking, right? But, I think, uh, you know, it's just nice, Dave, that Stanley's getting some games after the Jets brought in Colin Miller. 
because you know that as soon as Colin Miller's brought in, guys like Nate Schmidt and Logan Stanley are thinking, okay, you know, that's going to bump me down a little bit, right? Not not to say they're not going to play again, because obviously Nate Schmidt and Logan Stanley were in, but, you know, once it gets into the playoffs, one of Nate Schmidt or Logan Stanley, most likely, Dave, you'd agree, and Drew yeah. are, are, are going to be out of the lineup. That's just because Sandberg uh, and either Pionk or Colin Miller is going to be your uh, your third pair there, right? So, yeah. but on this goal, like you're right, Dave. You know, Gus Bus provides a nice screen in front of Elvis Merlikin. Merlikin, but it's also very, Zach Wierenski that's passes exactly up, what I was going to say up the boards to absolutely nobody. Yeah, it was um, like I, I forget if it was, it might have been Trey Fix Wolanski, who obviously had a great career with the Edmonton Oil Kings, the WHL. He's a a 20 year old rookie for the Blue Jackets, but but Wierenski just doesn't pass it to anybody. Yeah. So Logan oh, Stanley Logan one Stan? time. Well, exactly. So Logan Stanley just one times it. And what I was thinking is like, you know, Drew mentioned he's eight foot seven. Um, obviously, you know, six foot seven here for those who don't know. I, I mean, I have to say that, Drew, because I tweeted out that I thought that this Blue Jackets Jets game had a playoff <laughs> feel and somebody took me seriously. So, folks, he's six foot seven. He's not the same size as Giant Gonzalez. If you remember him from the WWF days, who I think he was actually eight seven or George Merzan, whoever you want to pick. Uh, who was actually that tall, but um, I just kept thinking, like, what would a Logan Stanley slapper look like? What, like, what is a goalie, even an NHL goalie guy's thinking of when that guy steps into a shot? Like, that is a big, large man stepping into a slap shot. So, again, as you mentioned, Drew, first goal of the season, good for him, for a guy that we thought might not play at all after the Jets acquired Colin Miller, right? So, you, yeah. you always like to see a guy who's, um, you know, a depth player get their first of the year, right? You always want to see a guy score a goal. You know, if you're a professional hockey player, score a goal at least once yeah. a year. You'll feel good about yourself. There's, you're you know, next. Well, yeah, there you go. Uh, four <laughs> nothing at this point in time. Five nothing. Uh, six minutes and twenty four seconds later, as the second period onslaught continues, Vlad Nemesnikov getting his ninth of the year. Morgan Barron and Neil Pionk with the assists on this one, and you know. It, it's a fortuitous bounce off the end boards uh, and the Jets, you know, will certainly take advantage of it. I mean, the Mesnikov is sort of a, a, along the other side of the ice, just waiting there and the puck comes off the end boards right to him. And Merzlikens gets a piece of it, but not quite enough of it to keep it out from the net on the ricochet. And uh, it's five, nothing for the Winnipeg Jets as they've decided to play a dominant second period uh, and, and just take utter control of the uh, of the contest on route to the ultimate 6-1 victory. Uh, but just a nice play, nice shot by Vlad Nemesnikov. Nice to see him get rewarded. A fourth line goal for the Winnipeg Jets. And you look at the scoring tonight. I mean, there was, it was all up and down the lineup. And that's what the Jets can do to you. They can roll lines at you and they can roll uh, lines that each of each line has scoring potential as opposed to some other years where, you know, if a fourth line ever got a goal for the Jets, it was, it was, you know, a half a miracle at that point in time. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Trevor Lewis, Nate Thompson, uh, Saku Manaline and James Wright. <laughs> some of the boys that, that used to play on the Jets fourth line. Right. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you're watching this game and you're like, this game's obviously over at that point. And I thought it was funny the way Vlad Nemestikov reacted to scoring that goal. Right. Like as Drew mentioned, it's it's the most fortuitous bounce you could get off of the Neil Pionk point shot, right? But it's like Eric Branson is there, and speaking of big boys, he's you know six five six six, and he just kind of you know swats at the puck and misses it, and it just comes to <laughs> the Mestikov and Brzezlikins, as Drew mentioned, you know I think he got a piece of it, right? Like, but it's just you're thinking like this game was already over. All the blue Blue Jackets are trying to do is get out of the second period, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because it's just it, completely embarrassing get, getting. Uh, you know, just absolutely outplayed at home. Um, so, I mean, that just added insult to injury. That's what I just kept thinking. Like, this is just, this has got to be embarrassing if you remember the Blue Jackets. Yeah, exactly right. It, it was sort of one of those rock bottom nights uh, for uh, any Blue Jackets fans in, in Ohio. Uh, the Blue Jackets do get on the scoreboard, so the Jets do not get their one, two. They do not get their fourth consecutive shutout victory. Uh, so team failure for the Winnipeg Jets, clearly. Yeah. Uh, 39 seconds into the third period, uh, Brendan Gauntz getting his second of the year. I didn't realize he was still in the NHL. I think he's also a former first round pick. Isn't he? Wasn't he a first round pick of the Ducks? Ooh. Got to look Bre that up. Brendan Gauntz. I mean, he definitely was not drafted by the Blue Jackets. He, no. he, 
I don't remember if he was a first round pick. You look it up, Drew. He could have been a second rounder, but okay, I I'm gonna look that one up. He gets his uh second of the year assist to Christensen. Uh that is uh Jake Christensen and uh Olivier, uh the uh uh again another depth player yeah. for the for the ducks. Matthew yeah. Olivier, a right winger for the ducks. I mean, can you tell that we're going into the dregs of the lineup at this point in time <laughs> yeah. for the for the uh yeah. for the blue jackets? Siri, who is Mikhail Pythia? Like, you know what I mean? Like who are <laughs> who are these players right now? as dave yeah. mentioned looking more like the uh is it the cleveland monsters now dave or is it the yeah. lake erie i always forget if oh. it's, if i it's was no, no cleveland or... no no cleveland Gaunt was a first round pick i got the there team wrong though he was a first round pick vancouver of the vancouver canucks yeah. back in 2012 Ooh, 20, 20 we were not at that we were that was in pittsburgh we were not at the draft uh, yeah the uh connor hellebuck here right that is correct yeah, yeah there Jacob you go. truba lucas sutter yeah luke yeah lucas well lucas Second sutter. Round pick. Yeah, Lucas yeah, Sutter. I don't even a lot think, of good second round pick. I don't even think Sutter played uh, Lucas Sutter. That is played pro hockey. I think, he went, did he? I think he went back and played at the University of Saskatchewan, yeah. if I recall. Former Red Deer Rebel, right, playing for that yeah. Sutter dynasty. But yes, he was not one of the Jets' better draft picks. No, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, look, I mean, you know, it it he almost scored on the original uh, play yeah, there. It's the and, post on the on the yeah, original so, one. And... I mean, that that's the def. I mean, good for the Blue Jackets for breaking Hellebuck shutout, but. <laughs> Unfortunately, there wasn't there wasn't much more to this goal, even though it was scored early 39 seconds well, into this third it, period. It's a, it's they a, just didn't a, build off of it. Right. It's a fortuitous bounce in that it hits Brendan Dillon and just sort of stops right in the in the middle of the slot. I mean, it, it's you know, the Jets are you know generally in decent position to start on this one. And then mm -hmm. the bad bounce is, is where the sort of the chaos begins at that point in time. Uh and you're right, good for the blue jackets, good for Gaunts to get the goal. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you know, Hellebuck didn't want to give it up as the Jets wanted to keep the uh, win by shutout streak going, uh, but it's five one and really it's not like it's getting gonna be competitive in this third period or anything uh like that whatsoever uh they make it 6-1 well they thought they made it 6-1 on morgan Barron's goal but that was called back from a high stick uh and i thought it was a high stick uh, uh looking at the review i really just wanted it to be a quick review that was my yeah. my, my, my fear was that yeah. they were going to really drag it out and like guys well, it's 5-1 it doesn't the only matter thing that sucks is like for a guy like morgan Barron, a yeah. young player on the fourth line you kind of want him to pad those stats right right because yeah. as dave has talked about many times he's having a career year despite going from the third line last year to the fourth line this year right but it was a high stick so i mean yeah. it was the right call on the ice but again jets fans are watching that sitting there watching the game thinking like i really don't care if this goal counts or not we've already won this it. game exactly get on with it and make let the game end without anybody suffering any anything resembling an injury that's what the third period was about uh mm -hmm. for the winnipeg jets uh but tyler to foley uh he gets his uh four second of the game fourth of the last two games yeah uh, it's his 30th of the season this is at the 1734 mark it's a really nice pass by damon severson yeah give him an assist yeah damon <laughs> severson played for the Blue Jackets. So, I mean, yeah. it was such a soft play in the neutral zone, yeah. and Toffoli comes in all alone, and you, ha I love the leg kick. I mean, yep. pick the corner, great shot to beat Merz Lickens, but the leg kick is such a beauty. Who does that it, remind it, you of, Drew? I know who it reminds me of, Timu, back in the day with the Jets. He used to yeah. do that a lot on breakaways, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think Damon Severson might be a member of the Devils again after that play, but <laughs> I mean, like, wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was here for the Blue Jackets. Well, yeah, and I, I like Severson. The like, pride of Melville, Saskatchewan. Yeah, he's a good Saskatchewan boy. Like, I, I just, again, you know, this blue, it, it, it has to be hard, guys, when, you know, uh, you're on a team who is a seller at the deadline. And as yeah. we talked about, you're missing some key pieces, specifically Patrick Line. And even though Adam Fantilli is only 19 years old, he's still a key he's piece. Right. Look at his stats. He was, you know, top five in, in rookie scoring when he was healthy, right? So it must be tough you know, to get up for some of these games. But again, you've got to be a professional and that's just an egregious turnover. Yeah. And, and you're right, Drew. I mean, it's a beautiful Tyler to made that look easy. And that's what that, that was a goal scorer's goal. That's a guy who, you know, he's like, okay, we're up five, one, but I'm, I'm going to bury this one and, and get my 30th now. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, credit to Tyler to Foley. This, this is all on him. Um, jumps on the turnover and makes no mistake about it. Right. That's exactly it. And 6-1 at that point in time, and the game ends by that 6-1 margin. It's just an absolute ass-kicking by the Winnipeg Jets is what they're supposed to do and what they've done as of late. I mean, think about the last th four games against weaker opponents. They beat Seattle uh, you know, nine days ago. What was that? 3 nothing, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat Washington also 3 nothing, right? Yep. Uh, I mean, that was last Monday. They beat... They beat uh, 
uh, Anaheim, Anaheim five yep. nothing, and they beat Columbus six yeah. one. I mean, you know, you're beating on your bad opponents pretty handily, and that's certainly which is a good again thing. like, and, but it, and the point that Ezzy made is one that we have to reiterate because when they were just getting past Chicago and Anaheim, rightly people yeah. were saying, "What is going on with this team? You're you're barely getting past teams that are bottom feeders." Well. Now you're handily defeating the teams that you should be handily defeating, and that's not a bad thing. It's not a castigation against the Winnipeg Jets. We're not going to malign them for that. Ultimately, they did what they needed to do, which was was defeat these teams, and and you know they're they're not very good, and that's fine. But you're showing that you are a very good hockey team, and that these guys can produce. and And the key to me, Drew, kept everybody fresh. You know, no guys over 16 minutes or just barely over 16 minutes, Ezzy. That that's that's huge to go into the to play against a really good Rangers team on Tuesday and have your team be this fresh. Not over and above the fact that you still have guys that you know you can bring in and they most likely will bring in on Tuesday to give uh, those guys some relief and you know skip them ahead probably to Thursday's game. But just a just a massive uh, win for Winnipeg because everybody had a piece of it. Everybody had a little. You know, uh, uh, no, I'm not saying everybody got on the score sheet, but everyone had a piece of that game, and yeah. you kept it. You kept it consistent, and and if the Jets can do that down the down the stretch, that's going to go a long ways. So the question is, Dave, is Tuesday night's game at Madison Square Garden? Is it going to be called the Jack Roslovic revenge game? Is it going to be called the? <laughs> I know Nick Patan's not going to be in the lineup most likely, but is it? <laughs> is, it the, is it the? Is it the? Is it the Patan revenge game? Is it the Jacob Truba revenge game? Like I'm not sure. Like Somebody's Wheeler's gonna, technically. Yeah, exactly. He might be injured, but it could still be the Wheeler Revenge game. I'm not sure, but a lot of ex-Jets on the Rangers. There are a lot of ex-Jets on the Rangers, and that's where the Jets head to next is New York. They got the Rangers on Tuesday. They got the Devils on Thursday, and they got the Islanders on Saturday. So New York, New York is what the Winnipeg Jets will be singing after they sing for tonight's 6-1 victory over the Blue Jets. And Drew, for Terry, who have got the, the comment up there, yeah. Matt Rempe is back from his suspension. I, he's, and, and honestly, he's eligible to play. I mean, whether or yeah. not he's in the lineup is to be determined, but he's True. he's eligible to return from his suspension on Tuesday. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's going to be a distraction at all for the Jets. Like some people were talking about, you know, should Logan Stanley remain in the line? Like, first off, I, I'm pretty sure like Brendan Dillon and Adam Lowry, if they need to, can fight yeah. Matt Rampey. Like, honestly, I'm a Devils fan, so I didn't like what he did uh, against the Devils, obviously. But um I, I don't. I don't, honestly don't think that's something they talk about at all. I really I think, don't think that's. A, I think they want to take the. They're going to be happy if they get the two points, Dave. I don't think yeah. Adam Lowry or Brendan Dillon is is really concerned. All due respect to Matt Rempe, it's like chill a little bit on your antics. The game plan. I agree with you on the antics and the game plan on Tuesday is is going to mention shutting down Zabinajad and Panarin. It's not going to mention set, uh, shutting down Rempe uh, in the least bit. Uh, of course, Tuesday still a couple days away for that, and the post game show will be around eight thirty p.m. on Tuesday night, maybe eight thirty, eight forty five, somewhere around there. But we have lots more to talk about tonight on the Illegal Curve post game show. Tough duck, hardest hitting comments still to come. Don't go anywhere. Manuk Moose minute as well. Luck of the Irish shining on the Winnipeg Jets. Dave's wearing the Fighting Irish. I'm wearing my Lucky Charms scarf. And as he's wearing an olive green farmery home of illegal curve beer uh, hoodie. Stay with us, everybody. It's Saturday. It's Sunday night. And we're live with the illegal curve post game show. BP's new New York Sicilian square footers with a thicker crust than ever before. They're light and airy on the inside and oh so crispy on the outside. You're going to have your work cut out for you. <sighs> Okay, fine. Try the New York Sicilian Square Footers, only at Boston Pizza. You guys ever wish for a game changer in life? Like finding out your favorite snack has zero calories? Or discovering the mute button on Ezzy? Picture this, a secret weapon for parking, where you can book a spot a whole month in advance. Tell me more, Drew. Pre-book your parking at really low rates, or maybe even for free if you use the code Illegal Curve. Free? What is this? Sorcery? The Grid Park app. It's a real secret weapon that has affordable game day parking. And to sweeten the deal even more. I love sweets. Our listeners can use the code illegal curve to park for free. Holy Zamboni. Tell me about it. Just download Grid Park, G R Y D Park, and use the code illegal curve. All one word to park for free. The game can change. Ah! 
just like that. Accidents happen when you aren't protected. So now what? Getting to your injury quickly can make all the difference. Help prevent them from being game changers with Linden Market Dental Center. Bonding, crowns, bridges, and dental implants. State-of-the-art treatments are available to help you get back in the game. To learn more, visit LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. Your coworkers love you because you always make them laugh. You're the life of the party with stories that have them rolling on the floor. Or maybe you're just the quiet one in the corner with the one-liners that just slay. Do you have what it takes to become Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job? Try your luck. Hit the stage at Rumors Comedy Club and you could be walking away with $1,000 cash. Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job. Presented by Rumors. For all the details, head to RumorsComedyClub.com. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rollies and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit Rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at Rollies.com. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. From jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Duck's clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. Sunday evening, we're back on the Illegal Curve postgame show. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsberg with you. Jets won 6-1 in Columbus against the Blue Jackets. They had to face the Rangers on Tuesday night. A little more post-game coverage for you still to come. We have, of course, the Tough Duck hardest-hitting comment. We have the Manuk Moose Minute. But what I wanted to highlight and make mention of, it's a great article by our buddy Mike McIntyre, who's on the road trip for the Winnipeg Free Press. Not sure if it's been linked on LegalCurve.com just yet, Hiya. Dave. It, not yet. Tomorrow. The link at... Uh, it's going to be tomorrow. Okay, you can get it there tomorrow. Uh, he sat down. Mike uh, had a one-on-one -on -one with Nikolai Ehlers about Patrick Laine and Patrick Laine's uh, health and the struggles that he's going through. Because of course, Ehlers and Laine still very good friends. So Mike speaks to Nikolai Ehlers about that, and you can sort of hear the emotion in the article. So great uh, kudos to our buddy Mike McIntyre. Kudos to Nikolai Ehlers for being comfortable enough to speak on the subject. And as we did yesterday on the Illegal Curve hockey show we want to send our best to patrick line and whenever he's back and if it's if and whenever we all look forward to seeing him back on the ice for whatever team he's playing with and uh, um, you know when he departs hopefully uh in, in, in a timely fashion uh the nhl player assistance program so just wanted to highlight that great article by our buddy mike mcintyre a couple post-game comments uh tyler to he got his fourth goal in the last two games uh, I thought we did some really good things. They're talking about the line, hopefully it only gets better from there. So that's Tyler Toffoli, the Toffoli Monahan Ehlers line, certainly clicking again tonight, combining for six points on the Jets' second and third goals, respect, respectably, respectfully. Um, and then Logan Stanley said it felt good to get his first goal of the season, help the guys win, and everyone loves to score goals once in a while. So good for Logan Stanley getting that goal as well. That was the fourth one in tonight's 6-1 shellacking by the uh, Winnipeg Jets over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Dave M., you got some moose news for us be uh, before we get to Ezzy's Tough Duck Hardest Hitting Comment. Let's get to it. Put on your antlers. It's time for the Manuk Moose Minute on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. It is indeed time to shine because the Moose were closing things out, boys and girls, in Chicago yesterday. Big match. They had defeated the uh, Wolves on Friday night in a shootout after coming back, scoring a goal in the third period. 
So if they could uh, close things out, they were four, one and oh to that point. And uh, two more points would, of course, would be significant to put a little more cushion between themselves and the Wolves for that fifth and final playoff spot in the Central Division. And uh, they started it off well. Parker Ford, the identity line. Parker Ford has been on a on a heater, that kid. He's kind of, remember, he was the guy everybody was talking to as about as he uh, in development camp. And is Parker Ford going to make the Jets? I'm like, no, he's probably not going to make the Jets out of college. But he's going to do some damage with the Moose. And got thirty-one and, points now. That's let's what I mean. Give, let's give the let's give the kids some props. I know you are yeah. Dave M, but this is a guy who nobody had heard of before training camp. That's this right. Is a, this is a guy who I mean, he I don't know First if he pro plays year in the has NHL been a success. Next year. Yeah, but thirty-one points as a rookie in the AHL—that's impressive. And counting, is, right? And, yeah, and counting. There's still uh, still a number of games left. I think fifteen games left for for the Moose. But this was a you know he's a, he's a real good player. He's fought found and again. I keep calling. You talked about that identity line as he had the third line Jets third line. I call these guys Jeffrey VL, Christian Reichel, and Parker Ford. That identity line. His twelfth goal of the year that gives the Moose a one nothing lead. Um, gotta mention, of course, because Tico Napoli is in the chat. And if I don't mention it, I'll, I'll hear it won't hear the end of it. But in that first period, Tyrell Bauer. First game back after missing seven with, I think it was his back, was it was hampering him. And he drops a right, I think it was a right or a left. No, it was a right hook. And uh, I've got it on, on my IC Twitter, but it went a little viral yesterday. And Tyrell Bauer is a tough kid. And I know people are saying, oh, bring him up. He'll fight Matt Rampey. But as I mentioned earlier, those guys are boys. They played, grew up together in Alberta and uh, played for the Seattle Thunderbirds together, junior hockey. So, uh, and, and likely train in the summer. But uh, so you're not going to see Tyrell it. Bauer is teaching and giving him like, some pointers. And that's why Rempe is having so much success fighting in the NHL. Dave, he's, you know, showing him the, the secrets, his secrets that have led him to be a, a feared fighter in the AHL. For sure. Well, he, like I said, he was challenged to the tilt. He, he didn't just answer the bell. He rang it with, with that one. And, and then uh, after the Wolves tied the game in the first period, None other than Henry Nickenen, who decided, you know, the first 35 of the games aren't really that at 35 <laughs> games of the season, not that significant, not that important. I'm going to get zero points. Now, to the 2019 fourth rounder of the Jets' credit, he was still doing a lot of good things. He just wasn't producing. But since then, as he last seven games, he's gone off. He's been a, a big producer, and he scores a, a real nice shorthanded goal for the uh, for the Moose to give them a 2-1 lead as he rips a shot home. N nice pass. Nicholas Jones draws everyone to him. So 2-1 for the Moose. And then Parker Ford, he keeps going. He gets his second of the game, puts the Moose up 3-1 late in the second period on a real nice, you want to talk about a tip play as he, he made a nice tip of a Billy Hainola shot. And uh, Brad Lambert got the secondary assist. He's up to, I think, well, that was his 42nd point, which is significant. We'll get into it more because he produces some more. And uh, But they weren't done there, the Moose. We're sensing a little blood in the water, and they kept rolling. So Nikita Chibrikov, the uh, the big Jets prospect, not big, small Jets prospect, but he's a talented kid yes. and uh, plays big because he's got an attitude. He scores his 16th goal of the year. And I got to tell you, if you didn't see the goal, check it on our Instagram, Illegal Curve, or go to my Twitter, I see Dave, because after he scores, he goes like this, and he shushes the crowd. And it's he did that in Grand Rapids. He did that in Chicago. And uh, it was, a, you know, like it was it was funny. And uh, who did that again, back in the day? Was it Yager that did that? I think Yager, no, did. Yager did the salute, no. didn't he? Yeah. Uh, well, Yager did the salute, but I, I'm trying to think who did the shush. I don't remember, but but Chibrikov's done it now twice, and it's it's pretty funny. He did it in the shootout. This time he does it with the moose up. Uh, it's, a big, for, it's a big thing in soccer, for sure. Or, or yeah. as it's called in Europe, football, right? Like, you see that a lot where guys go, you know, shh. But and not, not so much you, in hockey. You got seven minutes until curb starts. So come on. <laughs> well, I will say quickly, but but feeding Chipperkov that pass was Brad Lambert. And Brad Lambert then uh that was his 43rd point of the season. He's got 18 goals, 25 assists in 51 games. And for folks who are keeping track at home, he's on the edge of the top 10 all-time moose rookie points. But who's he one back of? Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor had 44 points, 25 goals, 19 assists in 52 games during that 2016-17 season. So Brad Lambert in pretty good company, uh, sitting just one back of Kyle Connor. I'm just saying it's something to take note of when people worry about these guys and, oh, this kid is developing real nice with the Manitoba Moose. So that's a good thing for Manitoba. And then CJ Cease, I think his birthday is today if I saw the Moose tweet correctly. So he got into it. And, and you know, one of the things Mark Morrison, the head coach of the Moose, talked about, boys and girls, was will and determination of this group and how they've kind of 
gelled as a group. Well, you saw it in this play where Dominic Toninato goes for a, a loose puck in the Moose end, swats it out. Cease gets it in the neutral zone, puts it on 5-2. But the Moose, Ezzy, they were not done there. Henry Nikkinen, he scores his second of the game very late <laughs> to make it a 6-1. Oh, 6-2, I think, for the Moose. Sorry, because I forgot uh, Chicago had scored a power play goal to make it 3-2. So it was 6-2 when Henry Nickin gets his second. He's got five goals, four assists in seven games. And again, doesn't sound that remarkable, but it is when you consider he had zero in his first 35. Game-winning goal was Parker Fords. He's got five already on this season, so he gets his due. Another guy, as he, as I round this out and give a guy his due, Thomas Millich, 2023 fifth rounder for the Jets. Kid's done everything. He's won everywhere he's gone. He's a complete battler. More people won- need to be talking about this. Like, yeah. To, to do what he's doing at 20 years old, I'm not sure if he's turned 21 yet, Dave, but 20 or 21, yeah. it doesn't matter. Either Professional way. Professional rookie goaltenders exactly. don't succeed at the AHL right. level. And so, I mean, that how good is that draft pick looking right now, right, Dave? We talked to many I, – I remember we were talking to Craig Button about Thomas Millich. Um, yeah. Uh, Stephen Ellis of Daily Faceoff. We yeah. were talking to Stephen Ellis, and we were like, why was he drafted so late? And people were saying, well, overage goaltender in the WHL. He's not that big. He's 20, he's what, as he? He's, what, six feet, Dave? Six one? Like, he's not big by today's standards, but the guy... Yeah, he's six has feet. A, he has 11 wins now. Like, it's it's incredible. Like, I but just as, wanted to mention that. You watch no, the Moose more, obviously, Dave, but I think more people need to be talking about the, the gem that the Jets have in their system right now. He's he's 20 years old. He doesn't turn 21 till next month. And he's got he's, he's won six straight games for Manitoba. He stabilized them in net. And more importantly, he played five of the six games uh, on this road trip, and he won all five games he played in. So Look, if, if only... The- like that is crazy ahead, stuff. Like that's awesome. And, and the, but the reality is, I'm just saying for this for the moose right now, they would not. We wouldn't be talking about playoffs. 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 We playoffs? wouldn't be talking about playoffs if playoffs? it wasn't for for what Thomas Millich is bringing that stability back for the moose. So he's been real good. They're home for six straight games uh, now. They'll be on the ice tomorrow. We'll have coverage of that, of of course, on AllelCurve.com. Feels like they've been gone for a month, so we'll have hopefully a few interviews to uh, feature on our YouTube page. And again. We've got tickets to give away. So if you want to go to the Moose game on, well, basically, actually, every Moose game because we've got tickets for them all. So I'm pretty sure i got t- tickets for Tuesday's game, I'll Wednesday's them, game, Dave. Saturday's game, and Sunday's game. But right now we're giving away for Tuesday morning. It's a school day game, 1030. They're playing Grand Rapids, who's the uh, probably the hottest team because Milwaukee's fallen off. And so uh, the big game uh, at home. They haven't been a great home team, so we'll see if they can keep this uh, sort of gelling that they were able to do on the road here in Canada Life. But uh, big game. Also, just quick AHL update. Iowa have defeated Chicago because Chicago had a game in hand. So it is uh, a six-point cushion right now with the same number of games between the Moose and Chicago. And Iowa's, I think Iowa's eight or ten points back. So um, it's going to be exciting right down to the end. There you go. There's the Manuk, the Manuk Moose ten minutes tonight on the Illegal Curve oh, yeah. Post Game Show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's Drew, happy, you're Drew Mortwardly. I, I understand. Have you, you heard, heard of something called PVR? Pa- yeah. You First of all, you can PVR it. Second of all, you can pause it. So it's like not even a big deal. You know, just for that, I'm going to continue on. No, I'm just going to say no. quick. Dave at IllegalCurve.com if you want to go to the Moose game or slide into my DMs. I see Dave. There you go. Dave, also, Drew, can I come over you to your house because I can't afford, uh, what is it, on Crave? <laughs> It's on, uh, yeah, or HBO, HBO Canada, whatever you have. Whatever. I don't. Oh, I don't actually, have Drew, that. sorry, Patrick wants more minutes. So, more minutes. Uh... okay, well, there you go. Dave M, <laughs> as only Dave M can do, covering the Manitoba Moose. No, full marks to you. We'll wrap up tonight's post game show. It's the Tough Duck hardest hitting comment. The Tough Duck hardest hitting comment. All right, we're giving it T Will. I wasn't sure, Drew. I never know if you're going to say anything or if you just want me to go right into it. So T. Will, we always see T. Will, good friend of Illegal Curve, like this comment. Monaghan, Toffoli, and Ehlers are so productive. I heard Connor has told Bones he wants to play on the second line. Word has it, Barron will move to first line and Ehlers will move to the practice roster. I like this comment. Obviously, T. Will is being uh, a little Tongue in cheek, I believe, is what it's called. T. Will, but I mean, we talked a lot about tonight how well Monaghan, Toffoli, and Ehlers have been playing not just tonight, obviously, with what was it, six total points, boys? Uh, Toffoli, yeah. obviously, leading the way with two goals. But love the comment from uh, a T. Will having fun. And I don't think we've given T. Will a toque yet this year from Tough Duck. So T. Will, send me an email, Ezra at IllegalCurve.com or slide into my DMs on Twitter at ICSEG with your mailing info. And Tough Duck will ship out a toque to you. And I know a lot of Manitobans were hoping that spring was going to come early, but it's going to be cold this week. So we're, we're at least a few weeks away from spring, I would say. 
Yeah, there's some melt. You know what the problem is? It's there's been enough melting that everything when it froze, it's just now a skating rink. Basically, <laughs> I walk the dog and I'm like holding on for dear life when I walk Brixton on on a regular basis now because of how everything's just ice covered. Yes, two Dave. more things you should mention, or if you don't, I will. Colby Barlow, big hat trick yes, in I, OHL I, I action, so he's got three more goals. He's up to 37 on the season. And Rucker McGordy and his Michigan boys, they, they defeated Minnesota, so they are their season continues in the Big Ten. Yes, exactly right. So that is a couple quick updates that uh, I was going to mention the Barlow one and I'd forgotten about the McGrory one because I was going to mention that earlier. But thank you for having my back, Dave, I got M, your back. as you always do. Jets win 6-1 over the Blue Jackets. We're next in action Tuesday night following the Jets and the Rangers, a step up in competition for the Winnipeg Jets. We'll see how they do under the bright lights of Madison Square Garden. Big thanks to all of you for joining us tonight on the Illegal curve post game show if you haven't already done so smash the like button subscribe to the youtube channel subscribe to the podcast leave us feedback and of course tell your friends tell your family the best place to be after each and every winnipeg jets game and again on saturday mornings is the illegal curve youtube channel big thanks to all of our sponsors they make this show the saturday show and the website a possibility that's our friends at rumors restaurant and comedy club Grid Park. Use code illegal curve to park for free. Remember, we're going to give away some free Grid Park parking spots for the upcoming Jets home game and the rest of the home games for this year. So be sure to be tuning in on Tuesday night when we do that. Linden Market Dental Center keeps your teeth looking nice and straight and shiny. Zapia Group Realty helps you buy and sell your home. Betway for making a wager one or two as long as you make them safely. Tough Duck keeps your head warm. Boston Pizza keeps you nourished. Seagram's keeps you from getting too thirsty. Same with Farmery Beer, home of Illegal Curve Lager. And Rolly's Transfer helps move you here, there, and everywhere. Whatever you need, give Rolly's Transfer a call. Thanks to everyone for joining us. It's been a great busy weekend here. We always appreciate your support. We'll be back Tuesday night. Until then, IllegalCurve.com. Illegal Curve YouTube channel's got all your video as well. We'll see you Tuesday after the Jets and the Rangers. For Dave Manuk, for Ezra Ginsberg, I'm your host, Drew Mandel. Thanks for watching. This has been the Illegal Curve post-game 